Good morning, everyone. We're so glad you're here with us today. Why don't you go ahead and stand and worship with us? Good morning, you can sit for a little while. <laughs> My name is Ava Murphy, and this is... I am Maddie Bethel, and I am the administrative assistant here at Community Life Church. So now that you guys know us, let's get to know you. If you are new here, please go to myclc.info slash new here. Next month, um, August 1st, will be our child dedication and baptism Sunday, our new life Sunday as we call it. So if you are interested in learning more about myclc.info slash sharing. Now will you please stand with us and worship how great our God is.
is enough. Amen. Oh, Lord, we thank you so much for being enough for us and for being our champion. I've tried so hard to see it It took me so long to believe it That you'd choose someone like me 
carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve and you take the broken things and raise them to glory you are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving cease This is my victory You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle you've won i am who you say i am you crown me with confidence i am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all when i lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has given me You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated by the power of your name i am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all let's have a moment together and pray um, I've been working on something with my with my kiddos about preparing for prayer that sound crazy but I think it's a good idea you know we learn as a kid you know you bow your head you close your eyes and you fold your hands and you know what that does to you it prepares your heart for what you're who you're about to talk to it's this moment of understanding that you're going to go before the, the, the Almighty One, the one that created you and me, created everything, uh, gets, to, gets to call the shots on everything, actually is the righteous judge. And when we're too casual all the time, we get into this concept that, that God is on our level. And the reality is that, yes, He did move in next door in the form of Jesus, and He did walk with us, but he did not operate as God, right? But God the Father is not human. You might need to hear that today. He is not us. He is God. So when we go to pray this morning, let's take a moment. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Putting our heart in a position or a posture that says, I am now going before the God 
of the universe. So, Father, you've already been here. You've already been aware of what's been happening here. And so we're singing to you. And uh, many are singing songs of worship, honor, praise, thanksgiving. And let's just be real. Some of us are just singing. Regardless of where we are, we're here, we're together, we're gathering, and God, we're focusing on you. Our time here today is to focus intently on you. Many times throughout our prayer, this is what happens. I do all the talking. I can be grateful, uh, but I can be pretty demanding too. So in this next few seconds here, Lord, we're going to be silent. And if there's anything you would have us to hear from you, I pray that you will speak to our hearts so that we can receive. not nearly enough time. So God, I pray that this will continue in our time with you throughout the week. This is a very, very small portion of our time with you. Uh, it's the time the family comes together and encourage in one, one another and bless one another and, and just uh, be a blessing. And then there's a whole lot of hours after right now that we need to be intimately connecting with you. And so we're about to learn that. We're ready. I pray that you'll prepare our hearts. Many have come prepared, ready to receive your word. And so anoint our ears, anoint our hearts, our spirits. May we receive it exactly as you uh, intend. And so we'll give you the praise over everything. Whether we think it's good or bad, you still get the praise because you are God and we are are not. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. What do we do with the big questions that are hard to answer? Well, we don't really know. What we do know is that we want community that feels like family. That isn't easy to come by, but it's exactly what Jesus had in mind for his followers when the church first began. Over the next two months, we'll learn the truth about Jesus and about how we can respond together. All right, well, good morning, Community Life family. Let's encourage each other with a hand clap here. <clears throat> Man, is it great to see your face in the place. Man, what a great time to be able to come together. My family had a lot of family time this weekend, and I don't say that to say it was too much. I'm here to say that it was a lot. And we, we, we met people on Shelly's side of the family that we didn't even know um, existed. <clears throat> Gentlemen from California and just being around each other. And there's something precious when you look over a sea of faces and you say, that's my family. And there's something precious about that. Um, sometimes you look over that sea of faces and you see family and you're not excited about it. But for the most part, when you haven't messed up the relationship yet, um, you can look over and say, we're related. We're related. I find out that I, I thought that I was related to most of Mogador, but it is definitive. I actually married into uh, more than three quarters of Mogador, so that's exciting. Um, so I got that going for us. But this is, what, this is a cool thing here for us to come together and to look over. We lead with a little bit of an assumption that everybody that gathers in the name of Christ here are believers. Doesn't mean you have to be uh, yet for sure, but we lead with that saying, hey, we're coming together as a family to encourage one another. So you can look around and look up and, and look down and you can um, look and say, wow, in Christ, I'm adopted into a family and these are my brothers and my sisters. Right? So that's what we got going on here today. We've got a family gathering. No food today, but still a nice time to get together and, uh, and be together. Last week we had uh, a really cool outdoor service. Um, who, did you, who was here? Raise your hand. 
No, that's not a shaming. I'm not trying to shame you. You're like, well, I was on vacation or I was doing this. Don't worry about it. Uh, we had a great time. It was outside. It was really warm. Some people got sunburns, which is so fun that you can get a sunburn at church, right? Because uh, we're not at Myrtle Beach. We're not in Florida. So they probably do it all the time. Uh, but here, it doesn't happen often. And so being outside, and some people were there for the first time in a long time. Some people were there for the first time ever. And it was uh, great to have our family together as well for the, the next time uh, that we were together. What, what, a, what a blessing. And we learned that Jesus is someone that you can believe. We learned through the uh, Saul of Tarsus, who had such a transformation that he became Paul the, Paul the Apostle, or the Apostle Paul. And we walked through a little bit of his journey so that we could understand the big idea that Jesus is someone that you can believe. Now let me give you a brief reminder of last week. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, Saul of Tarsus, uh, he was on his way to Damascus. Um, it was quite a journey for him to get there. And on his way there, uh, he met Christ, and it was this big, like, bow moment. And a bright light shines, he closes his eyes, and he's kind of like knelt down, if you will, and I would imagine I would be. And, uh, and so he's just kind of there, and he's having this conversation with, with Christ and then he goes to get up as, as he instructed and said, go to Damascus and I'll have instructions for you. Um, now you understand, Saul, dude did some bad stuff, right? I mean, he, he, he took out churches. He would, he would go into a church and he, he'd flatten it, if you will, and he would take people out and bad stuff. You know what? He was trying to do what he thought was right. Super misguided. So he's been trying to honor God for a long time. In fact, this idea of Christianity, that word wasn't then. Um, if nothing else, it might have been used derogatorily, those Christians. Um, but they, they talked about followers of the way. And so that, that Saul was actually believing that these followers of the way were leading people away from God. And so God's like, I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to protect this way of doing things. And this is how we're going to do it. And then Christ said, why are you persecuting me? And so they, he has a moment with Ananias and he restores his sight, which God did not have to do, but he chose to do. Saul was blinded, and, and, but yet was able to see kind of a corny cliche thing or kind of a corny statement, but it's true. Right? It's true. He was blinded and he finally was able to see. And then God gave him his sight back and he just went on this adventure. He went on this incredible adventure and he began to truly understand that Jesus is someone that you can believe. But if we can't get past last week's big idea, if we can't understand that Jesus is someone that you can believe, it's going to be hard to move forward. So I want to give a little bit more understanding on who this Jesus is, who this Christ is, so that we can have a better understanding to be able to choose to believe. It's not a feeling, people. It's not a feeling. It's, 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 it's an action. It's me saying, I am now choosing to believe. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved, right? So if you do this, if you choose to do this, that's when it begins. And so Jesus is someone you can believe. Maybe it's still a question for you. But here in Matthew chapter 1, I'm just going to read through some stuff that you can actually go back in the first four chapters of Matthew and you can read these words for yourself, these names, character qualities. This is how Matthew lays out who the Messiah is. In Matthew chapter 1, uh, he is called the Savior, the Messiah, Son of David, Son of Abraham, center of history, fully human, fully divine. Going on to Matthew chapter 2, he's the sovereign over the wise. He's the shepherd of the weak. He is, the, uh, the, uh, he is to end the mournful exile. He loves his fiercest enemies. Matthew 3, he's called the Savior King, the righteous judge, the one that will judge, the one uh, that uh, will do it in a righteous way, a, a way that we do not grasp. Fully righteous, fully God, filled with God the Spirit, loved by God the Father. Matthew 4, new Adam, the first Adam came, it did not end well. 
That's why we are where we are today as, a, as, a, as a mankind, as, as humanity, is because sin entered the world through the first Adam, and he is referred to as the new Adam, or the second Adam, if you will. True Israel, light of the world, hope for all nations. That's just within the four chapters, or the first four chapters of the book of Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew. And so here we have this man who is fully God, fully man, did not operate as God, but operated as a man when through his relationship with God, right? You're going, whoa, that's a lot to try to bring in. Here's what we need to know about Jesus. He can be trusted. He can be trusted. You get to choose whether or not you trust the people sitting next to you. Now, I know what you're going to say. I don't know that I can trust them because I don't want really to know them very well. Or if somebody's in here and you're kind of like, I don't know, they did me wrong, then it's based on history. So let's look at just those two things. If you don't know Christ well, then you need to start learning and investigating and, and, and just diving into who Christ is. Therefore, you get to know him well. If, in fact, you base your trust on, or your belief in Jesus based on his history, through your investigation, you'll see that he is solid, that he is true, that he is for real. Many people have gone through in order to disprove Jesus, to say, I'm going to show you this isn't even right, and to come out of it to say, wow, it actually takes more faith to not believe in Jesus than it does to simply believe. So when we say Jesus is someone that you can believe, you can stake a claim on it. You can stake your life on it, that Jesus truly is trustworthy. Now, why is that important? Why do I spend all that time going into today? Well, because the big idea is that Jesus teaches us new things. How well do you learn from people that you don't trust? How well do you receive the new things. Now, I'm not talking about just new information. I'm talking about even criticism, even let's, levels of correction. How well do you receive feedback from people you don't trust? And so if you don't have this trust or belief in Christ, it's going to be very difficult for you to then have Jesus teach you new things. So we're going to lead with some level of an assumption here that we are going to choose to believe Jesus. That is the only way that we can truly learn new things from him. And that's because we oftentimes will put up things on our own. We'll put up our own barriers. So we're going to walk through that a little bit today. Did everybody get one of these cards on the way in? It's kind of a half-page sheet. Uh, raise your hand if you did not get one of these cards. Okay, roll that section over there. Uh, the, <laughs> okay, so uh, Jeannie's going to come around. Keep your hand up. Wave her down, don't yell, uh, but just uh, keep your hand there. Anybody in the balcony need one of these? Okay, Raquel needs one. So there's a, there's a couple, and Joe. Okay, super good. And you, need, you guys needed a couple? Did, did we totally just pass them all out? I think I did. How about that? That's, that's a... a Great. Like, <laughs> how excited. If you guys have one, like two per couple, if you could share one, and then let's be a family here. Let's, let's get somebody that doesn't have one, one of those. Okay, if you have an extra one, I have somebody up in the balcony that needs one. Okay, if somebody could just run that up there. Super great. This is what a family does. We're going to take care of each other. So, okay, so she's got one. We're good. All right. Joe, do you still need one? You still need one? Does anybody have an extra one here? Okay, there we go. Awesome. Man, super great. So we're going to go over this card here together, and we're going to walk through and come up with a plan where we can begin to learn new things. We're going to learn new things. So hold on to that. I want to make sure that you have that before we get into it. Now today, the reason why we're talking about adventure um, is because that's exactly what it's like when you follow Christ. Uh, let me ask you a question. What's your favorite adventure movie? or adventure book. So you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna shout that out. Just whatever comes to your mind, uh, your favorite adventure movie or adventure book. Let me hear it. Did somebody say Fred? Oh, oh yeah, okay, okay. 
I, it took me to jo- Drop Dead Fred. Have you ever seen, <laughs> seen that movie? And I watched it. It was really dumb, <laughs> you know. Lord of the Rings. Okay, good. I heard, I heard a lot, and it was all, say it again. Right? Yeah, Indiana Jones. Let's go. I got to introduce Trevor to that. Yep, good. Yep. A lot of Marvel fans. You know, I heard Mar- uh, Marvel at the begin- first service. Um, they weren't as talkative as you guys. This is super great. And so uh, we've got all kinds of adventure movies. Some adventure movies I like are based on a true story. Um, Simone Biles. I think everybody kind of knows who that is if I said her name right. Uh, most decorated gymnastics uh, individual uh, to date. Um, she's a phenomenal young lady as far as, which is actually a true story, uh, a movie based on her life. Um, just amazing how she overcame so much to go after something that kept her focused. And when you watch the Olympics, uh, especially the, uh, the gymnastics portion, you're going to see her again. And, and uh, so she was in 2016, she was supposed to be there last year, and of course, last year happened, and then they're, they're there this year, so make sure that you check that out. So based on a true story, um, Eddie the Eagle, he was uh, in the 80s, one of the 80s Olympics, 88 maybe, about the same time Cool Runnings was in there, and, uh, and he was a, a gentleman that never did that uh, skiing, it was the Winter Olympics, skiing, and he would go down like the 70 meters or whatever, the 90 meters, and they would jump. And go, I'm pretty sure that's the technique, is that that's what they do, pretty sure. So you don't know, so it doesn't matter. And, uh, and then he would fly, and the adventure of going after that. Doesn't that sound exciting? Now, some of you are going, I'm not trying to get into any of that, and that's, that's okay. Um, oftentimes, people will say that because they don't know what the unknown brings, and so there's, there's a little four-little word that actually keeps us from wanting to be an adventurous type of a person, um, and it's called fear. Let's just call it for what it is. When we don't do something, we, we, we go with, oh, I don't know that I could ever do that. Fear is speaking. If you speak logical about it, you could, you could take the data and you could say, statistically, I could pull this off, right? But we allow fear to control us. But the thing about relationships is that the, the, the strength of the relationship uh, bears the weight of the unknown. Now, why does that make, well, how does that make any sense with today? When Matthew chapter 4, we're going to read Matthew chapter 4, just a few verses, and uh, so you can turn in your Bibles to Matthew 4, open your mobile device, uh, log in. Matthew chapter 4, uh, stuff will be on the screen, people in the little black box online. And so uh, we're going to read Matthew chapter 4 a little bit. You probably have heard this before, and if you only read this section and take it out of context like so many people do, you just take this one little segment and you say, oh, that's what that is. Um, you kind of miss the whole thing. You really miss the whole thing. There's really no kind of it. You miss it. So we're going to read this and we're going to look at this. This is a weird passage to me. In and of itself, by itself, it's just weird. It's one of those things that I'm going, I don't buy that. Okay, so follow with me. Matthew chapter 4, verses, starting in verse 18. So one day, as Jesus is walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, I want you to picture this happening. He's walking along the shore. He saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, uh, read these three words with me, come, follow me, right? Now look at this. Um, And Jesus says, and I will show you how to fish for people. Now in other translations, it'll say, and I will make you fishers of men. That's what that uh, correlation is there. Verse 20, and they left their nets at once and followed him. Does anybody else think that's weird? In this passage, all by itself, it gives you the understanding that Jesus came out of nowhere. He looked off into the sea, and these fishermen that had to be there to live, because this is how they made their money, that they looked out, Jesus says, hello, stranger, come follow me. And they were like, okay, and they dropped their nets and they left. Super weird to me. Did anybody else see that weird? Weird. Call it for what it is, weird. 
Verse 21, a little further up the shore, he saw two brothers, two other brothers, James and John, sitting on a boat with their father, Zebedee, uh, repairing their nets. And he called to them uh, to come too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. <laughs> what? Son, what are you doing? Um, that guy over there told me to follow him, so see you, Dad, right? Uh, this is a weird, this is a really weird statement, and this is why you don't just take segments out of the Bible and put it on something and say, this is what it means. The Bible supports itself, and you need to see that, how it goes together. Um, oftentimes, we just take it for what, take, take this, and then we don't have any other understanding. This is how I like to get ready for Sunday morning. I look over the passage of Scripture at the beginning of the week, and then throughout life, all week long, I'm thinking about the story. While I'm walking, while I'm running, while I'm cheering, while I'm crying. I don't do a lot of crying, but maybe I do. And so I just, we're just processing and processing and processing. And I started thinking about this over and over. I heard this story. Anybody heard this story before? Right? Come follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Lots of great pastors have taught on this uh, the way that it is and, you know, say certain things that uh, maybe it's true. I don't know. Um, it doesn't appear in here uh, that, you know, they saw him. They, they like, oh, he must be the Messiah. He's calling us to himself. And then there was, you know, lights and, and, no, and music and everybody, ah, right? And there was this moment, and you should have that too. And, and I'm like, that's weird. That's weird to me. I would never, like, why would I walk? I, there, was, there was no context for a relationship. So I'm processing all week long, and I'm looking, and I'm thinking, I'm going, okay, God, that's just weird. Show me something I've never seen before. I need you to show me something. Or maybe I'm just pushing a little bit too much here. And then I started thinking, there's got to be more to the story. There's got to be something. So this is just the way that I, I'm, I'm processing it, okay? So I'm not saying anything was left out. I'm saying I wonder, like, are there, are there conversations left out? And Matthew just didn't want us to know those things or share those things. And like... When he said, come follow me, there's a period in my Bible, and then it says they left and went and followed him. Was there a whole lot of stuff that happened before that? And so I started doing some research. Did they meet Jesus before that moment? Right? So this is just me processing and meditating on Scripture. And I started looking through, and in the book of John, you can read the gospel according to John, supports the idea that, I mean, uh, more than support, it just flat out tells you, that at some point, Jesus, uh, same, a lot of the same context, when Jesus was walking and, and he was going to see John, moments, the day before, John the Baptist baptized Jesus. You remember that? John the baptizer, he was not the first Baptist. <laughs> Somebody in here right now is like, I knew everybody was Baptist. Just kidding. And uh, John the baptizer baptized Jesus. Jesus come back the next day, and Andrew is standing there because Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist did an introduction. Lamb of God, Andrew. Andrew, this is him. And Andrew um, went and hung out with Jesus for the day. This is before Jesus comes onto the shore and says, hey, come follow me. This is before. And so he spends a day with Jesus, talking and interacting, hanging out. Hey, where, where do you stay? Where do you live? Hey, come with me. I'll show you where I'm staying. And he hung out with Jesus. And then Andrew went and he told his brother, Simon, who was called Peter, hey, we found him. We found the Messiah. This is him. And so they had a context for the relationship. Also, if that wasn't enough, being a teacher as Jesus is and was at that time physically on earth, um, he was known as a rabbi. Rabbi means teacher. And so he was teaching in those religious circles. And so he, he was, people were aware of him. They would have known that he was there. Maybe not to that degree yet, right? Uh, Messiah? No, no, yeah, that yet. But here's the thing. They knew that he was around and that he was a teacher. So now, fast forward to Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two brothers. He saw Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew. Now there's a relationship. 
at least a connection, right? When Jesus shows up, he doesn't show up in a blind state. He shows up already having a long dialogue and conversation, some hangout time with Andrew. And so he comes up and he sees them. Hey! Right? That hey is jam-packed with, remember me? Hey, remember we hung out? Hey, it's me. Hey, come, follow me. And the weight of that relationship sustained the heaviness of the unknown. So now let's transport ourselves to 2021. You're having a prayer time, and you feel this tug, if you will, on your heart from the Lord. If you spend time with the Lord, you understand how he communicates to you. You know when he's tugging on you and when he's just smacking you upside the head. Some of us are so disconnected, he could smack on us on the head all day and we wouldn't even know what it was. We'd be looking for a fly, you know. We have no concept of what he's trying to tell us because we're not sensitive to it. We don't, we don't uh, practice, if you will, interacting with the Lord. And so we have this moment 2021 where the Lord says, hey, here's what I want you to do. I want you to sell everything and give it to the poor. I don't know if he did. I'm just kidding. And um, you know that person that you've been arguing with for the past 20 years? I want you to call them. And because the relationship is not strong enough to bear the weight of the unknown of that miracle, if you will, we just kind of crumble and say, oh, that's never going to work. Uh, no, they're probably going to say this, this, and this. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. I can't do it. Nope, because then I'm going to get sucked back in and all this stuff, right? You with me? But if we have this relationship with the Lord, with Jesus, then even though that there's a huge unknown, guess what? It's okay. It's okay because the relationship can withstand the weight of the unknown. You can do things as God leads you because he strengthens you. But if you don't spend time in that relationship, guess what? It just makes you feel insecure and weak and unsure, and you're like, well, that can't be true, right? Because it messes with my comfort. And so that can't be right. And so we need to spend time with the Lord. So when Jesus shows up on the shore of Lake Erie or the reservoir here, and he says, hey, come follow me, you already have this context and understanding to say, yeah, I'm going to do that. Because I've talked to you, we've prayed together maybe, um, and so I don't know what it's going to look like, but that connection is strong enough for me to move to the next step. So what we're going to do today is we're going to tease out a plan. We're going to tease out a plan, and we're going to tease out a plan for everybody here today because we have, we have to figure this out. We can't keep going day in and day out and rely on this one hour a week out of 168 hours in an entire week. We have one hour where you're actually just kind of listening to me. Not a bad thing, appreciate it. But there's 167 hours that you just almost put Jesus on the back burner, or maybe he's here and you just come to visit once in a while right? This isn't a shaming thing. This is a revealing thing. And the reason why I think this is so important is because um, I myself, I, I study to be ready for today, but this private, ongoing relationship conversation hasn't been happening. So wherever you think I'm supposed to be, understand, I'm not on that pedestal. I 
am trying to come up with yet another plan that I don't want to fail. Because I bought all the devotionals, I bought the study guides, I've started, you go to my office right now, you'd see a whole bunch of books with bookmarks in it, and you don't put bookmarks in finished books. You'd see it a quarter of the way through, ten pages of the way through, maybe half of the way through. And then I had to come to the understanding that, you know what, I just have a hard time visually receiving this message. I'm an auditory learner, so I signed up for ChristianAudio.com. Yeah, man. So while I'm running or while I'm walking or while I'm doing whatever, I can be listening to a book or something going on, and man, do I receive it. But I used to feel ashamed that I couldn't read like everybody else. Now, I can read it, right? Like, I'm literate, but to receive it and to study it and to understand it, I struggled. And so I had to figure out another way because I wasn't going to let it go. So I just finished a book um, in a very short amount of time that I was like, man, this is empowering. But I need the accountability. You need the accountability and a plan. Why? Because we want to have the heart of this psalmist here. Psalm chapter 111 is a beautiful, beautiful heart posture of the psalmist. Now, of course, the psalmist didn't know Jesus, but listen to these words. Psalm 111, starting in verse 2. How amazing are the deeds of the Lord. Now, that deeds is jam-packed with everything the Lord does. Everything the Lord does. So, all the, all, everything righteous, everything holy, everything perfect, everything you do, Lord, when you correct me, everything. Wow, how amazing are all your deeds. All who delight in Him should ponder them. Everything He does reveals His glory and His majesty. Every, nothing can touch us that doesn't first go through the hands of the Father. So when you have a situation in your life that is just a crazy situation, listen, everything He does reveals His glory and majesty. So I will look for that glory and that majesty in every situation I'm dealing with. I will look for it. God, how are you revealing us uh, to yourself now and in this and in that? His righteousness never fails. He causes us to remember his wonder, wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord. Now, I read those words, and some people will say, oh, those are nice. Other people are like, I'm sorry, what? And others yet are still captivated by the thought of how precious and how amazing the Lord's deeds really are his ways, because of the relationship. So we're going to spend the rest of our time here looking at our next steps. Big idea for today is that Jesus teaches us new things. We know that. That's nothing new. Next steps are, are you allowing Jesus to teach you? On the front of our card here, it has it listed here. It has the big idea, and it also has the next steps. So are you allowing Jesus to teach you? We're going to be all right near. We're going to, we're going to uh, pretend like we're all on the same level, if you will, all on the same playing ground, and we're going to start fresh because you and I both know that we could use a clear and a new perspective on how we learn from Jesus, how we learn, how we grow. Because if you're not growing... You're missing out on so much. You're missing out on a fulfillment that Jesus came to give you. The goal, you're actually missing out on like a whole section of following Jesus. Because you become a Christian, you become a believer, and you begin to follow Jesus. You with me? And then you're supposed to go and do it too. The person that led you to Christ... They led you to Jesus, you grew up in the faith, now you go and lead somebody to Christ. And what do we say? Oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell them. They might get mad at me, right? It's that four little word, fear. I feel ill-equipped. Okay, so then we need to allow Jesus to teach us how this is going to go. I'm not going to teach you anything but how to come up with a plan. We have to start doing this.
This is not a shaming thing. I say it all the time. It's a revealing thing. Let the Lord reveal to you what needs to be done and do it. Right? We have a short life. Stop wasting time with excuses. Excuses are like, never mind. We'll talk later. Okay, we're going to start with the what. Are you allowing Jesus to teach you? What? What do you want to learn? Is there a big question that you want to explore? There's so much amazing content in the world right now worth exploring. What I mean by that is questioning, right? What's going on there? And then you dive into God's Word and see what God says. Stop leading with what you think and start leading with what He says. We, spent, we could have all kinds of conversations and get us nowhere based on what we think. Oh, actually, I think this is okay, or that's okay, or this shouldn't happen, or that shouldn't happen. Well, that's precious. Um, what does God say? The one that created all things? I appreciate opinions, um, but what are the facts? What, where, where does God land on this? And let's just lean on that. That way, we're not leaning on our own understanding, but relying on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Sound familiar? And so there it is, the Bible supporting the Bible yet again. So, what is it? What do you want to learn? Is there a big question that you want to explore? Is there a book of the Bible that seems interesting to you? Is there a topic that you want to uh, better understand? Jump in. Get in there. Read your Bible and check it out. The problem that we, the reason why we miss out on adventure is because we turn this into a study hall all the time. You go and you sit and you're quiet and it's, and it's boring and you're just kind of this, and, then you, and then, you, then you figure, well, if I just memorize it, right? Because we're told, you know, hide, hide God's word in your heart so you don't sin against him. Totally good stuff to do. Um, but if you don't do anything with it, you miss out on everything. And so actually taking it and saying, okay, oh, wait, I'm supposed to love my enemies? Aren't there pages of the Bible you wish you could just rip out? <laughs> Take out the Sermon on the Mount. And so Jesus says, here's what you do. Because I'm all for the miracles of raising the dead. Um, Jesus did some cool stuff. Cast out demons. God put flesh and bone on, or flesh and muscle on bone that had been there and raised up an army. That's cool stuff. But to be honest with you, I don't think those are the big miracles. I don't even know they're the big, little. But what about, what about that praying for your enemies thing? When was the last time you prayed for that person that you just can't stand? That right there, buddy, is a miracle. When you can, when you can just uh, put yourself in a posture in your heart that actually is like a sense of humility and, and kneeling, and you pray for a people you believe may not even be doing the right thing. And yet you pray for them. That is impressive. So, what do you want to better understand? Maybe that. The Lord's Prayer is on everything. It's on pillows, it's on walls, it's on tattoos. Dive into the Lord's Prayer and see what Jesus was actually trying to tell us. So that's the what. How? How are you going to keep learning and growing? What action steps do you need to take right now? How will you spend time with God? please don't try to answer all these questions right now uh, because you're going to overwhelm yourself. I'm just um, intentionally giving you a list that you can go over even later, but I'm just trying to peek some thoughts here. How will you spend your time with God? Do you enjoy journaling, drawing, music? Maybe after you read scripture, you create, you draw, you write, or play something. Do you love nature? Take a walk or go for a run or, or talk to God about what you're learning. I can't tell you how many times I have conversations as I'm running because I've got a lot of time when I'm running and, uh, and I'm just listening to something or I'm talking to the Lord or I'll just ask questions and, and it's just this ongoing, these moments. So how? How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? So what? What do you want to learn? How? And some of that what might just be, God, what do you want to teach me? Uh, when? When is a good time for you to set aside time to spend time with God? Because it's not a matter of, oh, I don't have any time. It's a matter of you making the time, because we all have time. Uh, we just fill it with other things, 
right? Oh, I have to go here, and I have to do this, and I have to do that, and I have to do this. But actually spending time with Jesus is a have to as well. Oh, I got to spend time with him. I got to spend time with my father. Yes, this is what I do. Put it in your calendar. So when? Uh, morning is a great time to start your day uh, on the right track, but maybe you're not a morning person and prefer spending time with God at night. Um, I tried the morning prayer time, the morning Bible reading, the, 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 the one and only time that I got up at 4.30 in the morning. I was, ready to, uh, I was ready to be crucified with Christ at 4.30 in the morning. And I woke up and I was like, well, I mean, this should be easy. I mean, you just wake up and go. I mean, I can get up at my alarm at 5 o'clock in the morning right now and within about a half an hour prepared to go running for miles. And I'm just ready to go and I'm moving and I'm going. Um, but it's a little different when you wake up and you go into a dark, shadowed space because you don't want to turn a lot of lights on because the family's still sleeping, and you sit there and you start reading uh, your bio. Even now, I'm feeling tired. And so, and, and you just kind of like, you're using your phone and, and you're doing this thing and you're reading it. Have you ever read a line of something and you read it so many times, you could have sworn the book was over? Right, You read the same line over and over and over again and come to find out you actually never made it out of greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so you're reading, you're reading, you're reading something and you just, and so I discovered a meet and I had to tell myself, and I had to learn, right? So um, that's not my best time to read. That's not my best time to sit down and do this. Afternoon's actually my best time. I just have not been doing a very good job of making Okay, I made it sound like I'm doing a partial good job. No, I've been doing a poor job of afternoon sitting down. Okay, Jesus, what do you want to teach me? Just me and you. Nothing you want, nothing, you know, nothing for like Sunday consumption necessarily, but just, hey, relationship time. I haven't been doing a good job at all on that. And so um, with that, you've got to find a time that's good for you. Maybe you're a night person. Um, after 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, my, my wife starts shutting down, man. Um, that is not a time for her to start studying or even having deep conversations. <laughs> and so I let her have her time. And so she's up in the morning, you know, 5.30 or so in the morning, and she's reading and she's studying and she's going through her stuff there. Uh, remarkable. So when is your time? You might have to, during your lunch hour, you might have to take a portion of that and, and just and go through that because the relationship is important. You can either do that or you can scroll on Instagram Reels. You know what that means? Some of you people. This. Right? Okay. You go through it. You can go through all these videos online and just kind of like watch something that really doesn't matter. Sure, they can be entertaining from time to time, um, but when you really, you're missing out on a 5, 10, 15 minute conversation with the Lord, the one that made you and created you and actually knows how you tick and has this path for your life. Um, I'd encourage you to spend some time in that. So uh, the what, the how, the when, and where. Having a specific location in mind could help you be more consistent in your habits. If you have a space in your room, um, there's a movie that came out on Pure Flix called War Room, and uh, Precious Lady had a, a room, her closet, where she did all of her praying. And when she walked in that room, like she, you just knew like her mind switched to, I'm going to battle. And she doesn't mean you can only pray in that space. It just means that when I go in that space, this is what I do. Do. So you might find that at the dining room table, that's your space. You might find that in a comfy chair or on your front porch or whatever, like in a four-season room, three-season room, whatever you can tolerate. And then you're in these different places. Maybe you might even come in here during the week and say, listen, I need to sit here and do this right here in order to be able to learn. And then we can make that happen. Here's the thing. Where is your place? So what do you want to learn? How are you going to go about it? When are you going to go about it? Where? Now, here's an interesting question. Maybe this should have been at the very beginning, but why? Why are you doing this anyway? Well, let's look back at your what. You have defined a goal about what you want to learn, but why does that particular goal even matter to you? Why is that the thing you want to learn? So there's a lot. Is it fair to say a lot going on in our world today that is just changing at a rapid pace? Relationally, culturally, you have questions in your mind right now that you're trying to figure out. I want to encourage you to take that question and go to God's word and let Jesus teach you. Let Jesus teach you. Let this, his spirit talk to your spirit and go through God's word. And it's awesome to have that one-on-one -on -one time but don't just only sit down 
by yourself because you need a who. You need a who. Who else can you learn with? Who can you share what you're learning with? You need, everybody, needs, everybody needs a mentor. Everybody needs a Timothy, somebody to bring up in the faith. Everybody needs a Paul, somebody that can actually take them and raise them up in the faith. You need somebody uh, further along than you, and you need somebody that you're raising up as well. Right? You're like, man, I don't know if I have time for that. Um, you, you would make time for that if you felt that it was important. I, myself, uh, Pastor Gordon, would make better time if I would just focus on the intentionality of my relationship. So I've had to come to a, self, my, a moment myself of repentance. God, I have enjoyed talking about you for a long time. But I would like to now intentionally start talking to you and with you. I want to know you better, deeper. I want the relationship to be so strong that the unknown can just sit right on top of that and it's all good, whatever you tell me to do. So, if Jesus is teaching you something, what is he telling you? And what are you going to do about it? On the back, you could see there's probably already saw there's lines where you can fill in later. You can do it now if you want. Don't let this overwhelm you because what you're going to do is you're going to say, I'll get to that. And it'll be forgotten. Start with the what. This week, start with what. What do you want to learn? How do you want to grow closer to God, right? Like, just what? 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 What is it that's really plaguing you that you're like, man, I wish I had a better understanding of that? And then start into it. I can't be happy to give you resources. Email me. I'll send you what things that I have. Just get to it. Get to it. A few minutes every day can turn into a great, great relationship with the Lord. But you have to be intentional. Let's pray about it. So, Father, there's a whole lot of stuff that we just kind of talked about right here. It's actually rather basic, but it feels heavy. And so as we move forward, I um, just want to praise you for the privilege of forgiveness. I want to thank you for the great opportunity of forgiveness. Thank you for the redeeming work that you're doing in our lives, those of us who call you Lord, that call you our Savior. Thank you for the sanctification that you're doing in our lives where you are setting us apart from the world to be who you want us to be. And so as we go through this plan, uh, this week we're going to look at what. What do we want to learn? I'm going to ask you, will you tell us maybe something that you want us to go after? Guide us, instruct us, oh, and heal us. Because the devil wants us to feel shame right now. The devil wants us to feel bad. The devil wants us to feel in such a way that's going to overwhelm us to not move forward. But I declare in the name of Jesus that in this moment right now, we will only hear your voice. The devil has no place here, no ground. This is a time for us to connect with you. And so speak to us this week so that we can have this exciting, awesome adventure, regardless of what happens. Wow, following you is awesome. And we just thank you in Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, please stand and receive the blessing of the Lord. While you're standing, I think I, I failed to give you a little update. I was pretty excited about getting into the information today. Um, update on the HVAC system. If you look up, you can see progress. <laughs> Isn't that great? And so that's pretty cool. Uh, the guys that we're working with are working so hard. They really are. They're here often, and they're up and down and in and out, all, all kinds of hours. They're really working. But as you know, post-COVID stuff, um, it's hard for, for some suppliers to get stuff in. And so they're working very diligently, but they can only do uh, with what they have, with what their suppliers are giving them. And so they're working really hard to get what they need for this up here, because this is going to look slightly different, but not too much. Um, but that's why the scaffolding is under there, because these guys took all that down, which is not an easy task, because they believe in this. They believe in us. We're building some relationships with those guys. 
And so what a blessing that is. So be encouraged that the Lord is moving us forward and it's all good. We have a place to gather and soon, very soon, um, we'll have a balanced uh, temperature throughout the entire building where we can use to the fullest. So praise the Lord for that. All right, receive God's blessing as we head out here today. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now say it with me. Go and be the church.